Hello everyone, I'm Guy McAmerican, and I'm here to provide filler that doesn't add anything significant to the movie. Look, here's a map. Here's another map. Now I'm holding a marble for some reason. I hope you found these scenes entertaining, but probably not though. Hello, it's me again, and in case you're tired of me adding nothing to the movie, we have another reporter on hand, Kenji Japanesey. Tell us what's good, Kenji. Um, I don't really have anything to add either, but I do have a map. See, look, it's a map. Thanks, Kenji. Uh, I've been cheating on my wife for over ten years. Well, I better fix that right now, so I'm gonna continue on with- <laughs> Oh, come on, guys, I haven't even got to the movie yet! I just show the title card. Have a big hearty slice of Godzilla versus the sea monster, you simpering fish-lipped half-wits. Yeah, that'll do. All right, let's get this sushi train moving. After all, the DVD's brought to us by the same studio that made the American Godzilla, so you know we're in for quality. Then reported that Edward Godzilla has fallen beyond the bay. At least 35 people have been killed and 81 injured, and more than 300 buildings destroyed by the two giants. Okay, nice to see that fight scene, but thanks for telling us about it, I guess. What's the matter with that guy? Alright, so in case you haven't figured it out by now, the explanation for what's going on is... Ready for it? The monsters are controlled by I know this was only the second movie in the series to use this storyline, but in the movies that follow, this plot device... Anyway, they explain that in order to combat the massive amount of giant monsters that have popped up, the world's governments created the Earth Defense Forces, who by the looks of it are also a J-pop team, and few humans with remarkable physical abilities, they can discover all over the world. Earth Defense Forces recruited these human humans, and formed them into a special unit, the Ant Organization. Oh, thank God, Godzilla's here. Maybe the giant radioactive dinosaur will inject some logical sense into this movie. And look, now he's causing the cave to collapse. Wow, is there no end to this lovable little scamp's unhelpful and potentially life-threatening antics? Damn, Kaiser the door may have got an extra pair of legs. He should have brought some extra heads with him. If you thought they killed the shit out of Peter at the end of Destroy All Monsters, check this out. However, they're not the only ones who are interested in it. Shit, not only do these guys have guns, they also brought their own upbeat funk soundtrack.
I guess it's not all of them. Turns out there's more in the jungle than just monsters. Wait, don't go. I was just going to take pictures of you without your knowledge. Oh man, why do girls always react that way? What? What the hell are you talking about? Slow down, movie. I'm not even two minutes in and I'm already reaching critical rift mass here. So, I don't know. But look, Godzilla is heading this way. Maybe something is falling, Godzilla. How do you know that? What are you basing all this on? I'm not trying to go through every line of dialogue here, but this opening scene throws so many random ideas at you. It's almost like the filmmakers had no idea how to begin the movie. They just thought if they tossed out a bunch of random shit about brainwaves and radio interference, nobody noticed. Okay, so the gist is Godzilla's heading towards an island for some reason. The pilots have nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Funny, maybe a jackass. <laughs> hey there, I'm high again. Down with my only friend. No cash, I had to lend. A will that I can bend me like a superman. I'm in a cop's can. I'm doing really great, but only when I'm down with the disco. Wait a minute. Ah, forget it.